but Oksana Krul looked very, very good indeed. Big swim and a big advantage that she has over the rest of the field. Yeah, we've got a similar situation as we had in the women's SP6 100 meters breaststroke, and Oksana Krul will definitely be coming into this race as the favourite which can work two ways sometimes, because some athletes really thrive on the pressure of having a close race to drive them to a quick time. But we've seen so many times already this week that there's been so many exciting races when it's been an athlete against the clock. Well, through the lanes, there, there's Oksana Krul. She will be the favorite for this one. Amrava has done well this week. Clausen will be hoping get on the middle podium again. Orakia Maka in lane number seven. That's Dorka from Romania in lane number eight. We saw Duskova in three. Diodorova in two. And Mary Mary Makinen in lane number one. There is Oksana Krul. And Oksana Krul is has a very unique technique to swim with. Yes, yeah, she doesn't have much strength in her upper limbs, but she does have the ability to put them out in front of her, which she chooses to do because it puts her in that streamlined position. She's effectively doing breaststroke kick with no board, and uh, it really breaks the water, and, and you can see her cutting through the water, and it does provide a slight advantage to, some, to if she tried to keep them by her side because the shape of her arms mean that they'd actually cause a lot of drag if they were by the side of her. Well, she is going forging ahead here, ahead of the swimmer in lane number five. That's Maria Pavlova. Well, Oksana Krul has got a lead of about three and a half, four metres there as they go over the turn, 44.89. Pavlova, 3.8 seconds behind him. Duskova further two and a half seconds behind her but Oksana Krul looking fantastic again the blue cap of Ukraine yeah Oksana Krul really starting to pull away now she's worked really hard on not fading in those final stages of her race and actually in another advantage you will get as we see her come into the wall by her having her hands out like that is in the close races when it comes down to those touches not so much here at these European championships but when she raises her main rivals on the world stage she can actually touch the wall with those hands. Uh, here comes Oksana Krul into the closing stages now. No one is going to catch the Ukrainian here. Oksana Krul is coming home to take the gold medal for Ukraine. She takes it in 137.62. In second position, it looks like it's Pavlova will get in there in 144.47. And it will be a bronze medal to the Czech Republic, Duskova getting in at 146.88 and that was just ahead of Clausen who finishes in 150.60 but the race pretty much went as we expected it. Yeah, and like I said at the start of the race, in those situations it can be difficult for an athlete because if they're chasing a time for selection or just looking to do a best time, sometimes they need to race but we saw there from the start, see how our hands are they're out in front, they stay in position from that dive, and actually, if she, they bent though at the elbows, and if she was to put them down by her side, she really would, it would act as a break, and we would see a considerably slower time. So that's just one example of the way that Oksana Krul has developed her stroke to maximize what she's got available to her. Oksana Krul has been on the Ukrainian team for a few years now. Yeah, she actually, I remember her making her debut against uh, Charles and I in Reykjavik in the 100 meters breaststroke. And so she's she went 141 or 142 there, I think. So she's definitely moved it on over the last few years. But her favorite event is the 50 meters fly. So Anna Krul is the European champion in the women's 100 breaststroke SP7. Ahead of Pavlova and ahead of Duskova. Those are the one, two, three.